Good afternoon, welcome to Literature Theory class. Literature is still based on poetry. And as we discussed last week, we discussed the origin of poetry. Then also, we will also discuss the definition of poetry, reported by different teachers of the subject matter. Then we also discuss elements of poetry. So our focus this afternoon is on types of poetry. So we'll be looking at types of poetry this afternoon. Then, basically, poetry is divided into two categories or into two major types. We have what we call narrative poetry. That is one. Then two, we have what we call lyric poetry. So these are the two major types of poetry that we have under the study of poetry. Then under each of these, we have other types under them. Therefore, we can say that all forms of poetry can be categorized under any of these two classes. Then we'll talk about narrative poetry. Narrative poetry is an extended narration or account or story of gems of literature. So what we are saying, let's say, is that narrative poetry has the element of drama. So it is long in its narration or in its exposition, longer than every other form of poem that we can lay our hand on. For instance, narrative poetry has some element. We have what we call characters. We have what we call content. We have what we call setting. Then we have what we call themes. So these are the elements of narrative poetry. This means that in every narrative poetry, there's what we call characters, which is very unusual in normal poetry or poetic form. Then we also have what we call content, then we have setting, then we also have what we call theme. And of course, theme is applicable to every artistic work of art. Then the types of poems under the narrative poetry is what we call epic. Epic, the word epic is from a Greek word, which means long narration that is an art of literature or poetry that is long and that's why it is very simple to say or define epic as a long narrative poetry for instance the proud king it is an example of epic and if you look at the content of the Proud King, a poem called The Proud King, in the content of this poem, we have characters. And then we have settings, we have content, we have theme. Then another example of poem under the narrative poetry is what we call ballad. Ballad is also a poem under narrative poem. So each of these two poems are long in nature. However, ballad is one of the oldest form of poetry. The oldest. Ballad, the history of ballad as a poetic work of art is traceable to Aunt Omar. Omar's poetry in Greek around 5th BC century before Jesus Christ was born. So Omar has been in place. As a matter of fact, he is a poet during this century. And during his reign, Balak has been in existence. And that's why we say that Balak is one of the oldest poets. And and each of these poems are written in the narrative poem. Also, more 
or 70% of ballad poems are not written because it has the element of tradition. So most ballads are sung or recite verbally or orally. So these are the two basic forms of poem that we have under the narrative poetry. Then let's quickly look at lyric poetry. Lyric poetry has to do with lyrics. I want to talk about the word lyric. The word lyric is from a Latin word, which simply means instrument or musical instrument. So traditionally, or in a palace definition, lyric is a type of poem that has to do with the emotion, feelings, mood of the poets. They have a reflection on the reader. So we also have types of poems under the lyric poem. For example, under this, we have what we call sonnet. Sonnet, basically, sonnet is a poem of 14 lines. Sonnet is a poem of 14 lines. Very simple. And we have what we call the English sonnet, and we also have what we call the Shakespearean sonnet. The Italian sonnet is quite different from the English sonnet. The English sonnet is also different from Shakespearean sonnet. So we have three sets of sonnets. The English sonnet is written in two stanzas. The first stanza could be a poem of seven lines. Why is the second stanza could be a poem of eight lines? Or thief. Or eight lines, then seven lines. Whichever be the case. Then we also have Shakespearean sonnet. Shakespearean sonnet is written in monologue. And that was the idea that William Shakespeare imitated from Italy. Originally, because the picture of Shakespearean sonnet is the main type of Italian sonnet. Then we we'll also have what we call elegy. Elegy poem is a poem of lamentation, a poem of sorrow. There is a poem that one recites at the, the, the lost of loved ones. Then we also have what we call death. Death is also a form of lamentation. So both energy and death have the same content. The difference between energy and death is that death is a poem or a song that an individual or a poet recites immediately at the lost of loved ones. Why energy is a past sense or a poem that a poet recites after how many years in remembrance of the loss of loved ones. So that is the major difference between energy and death. Both poem are poem of lamentation or poem of soul. So we we'll also have a poem that we call Ballade. Ballade is also a poem, different from ballad. This poem is traditional in nature and is the oldest form of poem. Then Ballade has the element of ballad. The major difference between Ballade and ballad is that it is a poem that reflects the feelings of a particular poet, particularly maybe in appreciation of nature. So we can classify poems written by, by Alexander the Pope as ballad. We can also classify poems written by Samuel Taylor as ballad. 
and so on and so forth. So we have collections of poem. So in summation, poem is basically divided into two types. Narrative poetry and lyric poetry. In our next class, we'll be looking at the history of poetry. Thank you.